Hello, everyone. Hey, <laughs> it's been it's been one year since I was last in in London, and um, and a lot of things have happened since. And um, I'm super happy to be here today to talk to all of you here in the room and also online. I know you're very many tonight about the 2015 release of Adobe Creative Cloud, but. Of course, this is a creative meetup, and um, these creative meetups, we are having them all over the world at this point. And I think it's a really great opportunity, not only for us at Adobe to meet with uh, creative professionals all around the world, but also for creative professionals such as you to meet each other and, uh, and, and, uh, and connect in, in many different ways. So welcome to this creative meetup. I know there's many of you who are, um, who are on Behance. How many of you are creatives on Behance? All right, very good. So Behance, of course, is the, uh, is the um, uh, community of creative des designers and creative professionals that we have uh, in Creative Cloud, and which allows uh, everyone to showcase their work, to get in touch with potential customers, um, and, uh, and also to have their portfolio online. But just very quickly to, um, to go over what Creative Cloud is again, uh, because um, it's such a it's such a complex um, idea that sometimes uh, we tend to forget some of the parts of it because many of us think of the desktop applications you know like Photoshop and Design and Illustrator uh, but Creative Cloud is so much more than that Creative Cloud is the ability to create on mobile and we're seeing we're seeing that number increase uh, almost monthly the number of people who start their workflow on mobile devices and I will show you a little bit of that in uh, in my presentation today and then of course there's the community aspect of it and uh, and this is why I asked um, you guys in the room who of you um, uh, are, are are part of the Behance community and this of course is also a, a community that is growing by the day Creative Cloud is also the ability to share your assets. Now you can share your assets too with the whole team. You can share your assets with your customers. You can share your, your work with many different people using Creative Cloud uh, as, a, as, a, as an asset management system, let's call it like that. And then there's this whole part of learning. If there's something that you need to know about or maybe a new way to, to use an application such as Photoshop, for example, the multiple artboards in Photoshop, we have all that at your fingertips. You just need to click and watch a short video and understand how these things work. So the learning process is made very, very uh, much easier. And then there's the whole concept of marketplace. Inside of the Creative Cloud um, application, you can access a whole bunch of, um, uh, of assets for, uh, for, um, for example, um, positioning a logo uh, on a jar of, uh, of marmalade, for example, and see how that looks, or textures or patterns and things like that that you can use immediately inside of your workflow. So what is, uh, what is changing? What has changed last week? Last week, we announced the 2015 release of Creative Cloud. So many of you think um, and almost uh, you know, ask me all the time, so I thought Creative Cloud was going to be continuous innovation. What is, what is this all about the 2014 release, the 2015 release, etc.? Well, there comes a point, there comes a tipping point every year where we need to readjust all of the applications for upcoming technologies, for new graphic cards, for all sorts of things that are not necessarily software related. So this is also an opportunity for us to come up with a brand new version of all of the applications and be ready for the future. This is something that I will be talking about uh, quite a bit today about the past, the present and the future. And you will see, uh, you will see exactly what I mean by that. So, of course, one very important theme in the 2015 release of Creative Cloud is the, um, the connectivity of the mobile apps and the desktop. And um, we, I will demonstrate to you in a, in a second how easy it has become to start your work on a mobile device and then continue that same work in your uh, preferred applications, such as Photoshop, InDesign, or, or Illustrator. And, uh, and you've seen the video before. There was my, my friend Brian Yap there, the one who draws on the iPad. And what I find fascinating with Brian Yap is that he, um, he started doing these drawings on the iPad and really developed a sensitivity for, for drawing on the mobile device that I haven't seen before. And what I've noticed now is that many people are, are, are following that style that Brian Yap launched on the, on the iPad, this very um, uh, precise style of drawing, which only um, uh, the iPad can uh, uh, allows at that point with a stylus and... Uh, and um, and Adobe Draw and Adobe Line. 
So connected apps, very important. New concept, the creative sync. Creative sync is the heart of the creative cloud. That's what we believe is um, really the most important part of it all. You remember that, that Creative Cloud logo that I had before? Well, in the middle, right there, we have Creative Sync. And Creative Sync allows you to uh, synchronize your creative world. I'll go into a bit more detail in a second. And the third announcement is, of course, the, uh, the launch of Adobe Stock. In January, we, ac we acquired um, Fotolia, which is a stock imagery um, um, company. And in these few months that, um, that went by since the acquisition, we've integrated Adobe Stock in all of the, uh, all of the creative applications. So you can launch ad um, Adobe Stock right from the Creative Cloud application, from Photoshop, from InDesign, from wherever you need it, and even from your mobile devices. I will show you that in, in a second. All right, so let's talk a little bit about Creative Sync. Like I said, this is the heart of everything. This is the heart of this creative workflow, this creative world that, um, th that we're imagining together because this comes from feedback from the creative community and also from what we at Adobe have prepared in the various applications to make everything work together. So of course, it's not only about, uh, about synchronizing you know, your, your creative life, it's about synchronizing your assets. For example, your color themes that you create with Adobe Color, uh, or synchronizing your brushes, which you, create, which you can create with uh, Adobe Brush CC, or um, uh, synchronizing styles from InDesign with other uh, InDesign documents. Um, and of course, synchronizing all of the assets if you need to share those. By the way, Adobe Color, Adobe Brush, Adobe, uh, Adobe Shape are all available on Android devices now. So last week, we've also launched these versions because this is another question I had a lot. Why do you always think of iOS only? Well, we don't think of iOS only uh, uh, anymore. We also uh, develop very, very uh, strongly for Android at that point. Second thing that you can keep synchronized are the fonts with your access to your Typekit libraries, of course. The, the, the Typekit libraries, which are also accessible thanks to Creative Sync on your mobile device, and I will show you that in a second. Uh, the connected workflows, basically starting on one device and finishing on another. And this is thanks to Creative Sync, everything is uh, synchronized. Collaboration, I can share with individuals, I can share with group of people, I can share a, f a Creative Cloud folder and make sure that everybody has the same assets. I can share libraries. And this is super, super interesting when you think of, an, of a design agency that needs to share maybe uh, the logos to use for a customer. We can share now a library right from our Creative Cloud applications and make sure that everybody uses the same logo, the same colors, the same styles, all right? This is really, I think, a designer's dream come true, and we're ma making it better by the day. The community, like I said, super important, uh, a way to showcase your work, uh, also increasingly a way for customers to find talent, to find uh, designers to, uh, to work for them. So it's, uh, it's really a, a two-way system. It's becoming a two-way system where um, uh, creatives can not only show their work, but also um, um, uh, uh, agencies or uh, customers can find the, uh, the, um, the creatives to do their, the work for them. And now, of course, Adobe Stock. And this is, like Rupert mentioned, a collection of over 40 million images of vector graphics and, uh, and, photog and, and photos and other, other graphics that, can, that you can use inside of your creative workflows, right from, uh, right from the applications. So, just as a recap before I, I jump into, uh, into a, a short demonstration. What we're announcing, what we've announced last week and what we're announcing here today in London is of course the major update across all of the applications. All of the applications have a new version, the uh, 2015 version. The debut of Adobe Stock, which, uh, which is really access to this huge um, gallery of images. And you will see that, um, uh, that it's very interesting how it is integrated with, with Photoshop, for example, or InDesign, how easy it is to actually find uh, um, um, imagery that way. Because this is something that we frequently need to do, right? So instead of Instead of going to, um, uh, to, to various sources, 
um, uh, and trying to find the correct image and uh, and putting it into our layouts as a, f a, f a position uh, for position only or uh, um, um, you know just to, to try things out and then try to remember where we found the image how we got it and then to license it is is not is not that easy and Adobe Stock changes all of that. So we also announced new mobile apps like I said all of the mobile apps for uh, for Android and also. Uh, Photoshop Mix for Android, and uh, uh, of course um, uh, uh, Adobe Comp, which is now a, a few weeks back that we launched it. But Adobe Comp is still only for the iPad, but it's it's an it's an application that lets me create layouts on my uh, mobile device. And then there is also huge performance improvements. We will see some of them in Illustrator, for example, and you will see that there is a real difference between uh, how how it was in CS6 and how it is now in, uh, in CC 2015. And of course, Creative Sync, which like I said, is the heartbeat of your creative life in that creative cloud. All right, so let's escape out of this a second and quit and go here to my iPad for a second because this is where I want to start. All right, so here are, are some of the um, are some of the mobile apps that, that we have, and the one that I want to, to show you today is Adobe Comp. And Adobe Comp is an application on your mobile device that lets you create layouts, but not only for, uh, for the iPad. It lets you create mob uh, layouts for mobile devices, which you can then work on in Photoshop, for example, for print designs that you can send directly from Ad um, Adobe Comp to, um, uh, to InDesign and then continue working there, or designs for web pages, for example. There's a whole bunch of things that, that you can do there. But before I do that, let me just quickly jump over to, um, um, to Adobe Stock, and you will see that when you're signed in with your Adobe ID, there's Creative Sync running in the background, and all, everything you do here in Adobe Stock will sync automatically to all of your devices, all of, your, all of the libraries that you, that you are using. So basically, uh, I was, I let's say I want to do a, a layout um, uh, about Hyde Park, okay? because I, I walked through Hyde Park this morning when I, when I came here. So let's see what, what kind of uh, images we have here in, um, uh, in uh, Adobe Stock um, that were taken in Hyde Park. So let's go like this. OK, so these are the images, all right? And there's, uh, I don't know how many there are there, but I can, I can scroll down. It's, it's, it's a continuous scroll. And you will notice that these images have a watermark on them. It says um, uh, Adobe Stock on them. So let me just take a couple. Uh, let me actually create a new library. Okay. All I need to do is to uh, save the preview. I can go here and say, I want to add a new library. And I'm going to say London Creative Meetup. Okay. And I'm going to create that library. And this library is now being used for saving that image inside, okay? That, that uh, watermarked image. Let's see if there's anything else that I would like to use. Maybe um, this is called the, the Long Lake, right? Something like that. I saved that to the London Creative Meetup. Let me go uh, and maybe take this other picture. Let me take a picture of maybe something that I can use for for creating something in Photoshop later, like this, for example. Let's take this one and download this image as well. So all of these three images were now saved into my Creative Cloud. Now, when I move back to, um, um, to my iPad and create a new document here, let me say that I want to use this, um, this dimension here, iPad landscape, okay? Let's open a new document like that, and I have my blank sheet of paper. Now, there, of course, I can use shapes directly from the menu, add shapes like this. I can go into my libraries to add shapes. I can also add text directly from there, but i show you a simpler way to do that. I can add images, of course, placeholders, or images from my iPad, or take a photo, or use images from my files, and then upload it. But that's the last thing I want to, uh, I want to show you. So by pressing this little button here on the left, basically what I, what I do is I go into drawing mode. And then I can, up, uh, in drawing mode, let's go like this, okay? And then if I draw like this, for example, I put an X in here, that's actually a placeholder for an image that I've just created. And then let's say that I want to create a headline in my, uh, in my layout. So all I need to do is a little box like this with a dot, and this becomes the headline. And maybe I want a whole bunch of text down here, okay? I want text here. All right, okay, so then I can go out of, out of drawing mode and move these things around. 
So for example, this I can place down here. I can say that my uh, title here is like this, and I can make the type smaller or bigger simply by using uh, my bestest tool, which is this one, right? And uh, I can like double click on it and say, okay, this is Hyde. This is a layout for Hyde Park, okay? And say, okay, gone, okay? And then if I go here and go into type, that's when it becomes super interesting because it's not only the 10 fonts that I have in, uh, 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 on the iPad, it's my whole Typekit library that I can access from here. So let's say that I want to go here and I, I want to add a font from Typekit. Of course, it goes directly into Typekit with my Creative Cloud ID, with my Adobe ID. And I can look at the featured font. I can even filter through the fonts and say maybe I want something hand-drawn like to get this, the, the feeling of nature there. Let's say that I want, no, felt tip senior. No, let's say, uh, let's say that I want to use, uh, let's take felt tip senior. Why not? Select fonts, okay. And then uh, update synced fonts. Perfect. Let's go back here. And then I close this. And then... If I go here into my list, felt tip senior, it's right there, and I can upload it like this. And then once it is uh, synced to my device, I can say this font here is like this, all right? And I can apply that to my layout. So how cool is that, that I can, through Creative Sync, get the fonts I need right on my mobile device? Then, of course, we talked about images here, and the same thing goes here. I said I'm, I want an image from my libraries, and I want it from the library we've just created, which is London Creative Meetup. All right, so I took these three images that, um, um, that we've just seen in, uh, in Adobe Stock. Let's say I want to add um, uh, this one, okay? And then, of course, I can, I can, I can place it exactly the way I want and, uh, and create my design, all right? But the really cool thing is that once I'm done with this, what I can do is, say, export that to Behance, for example, to get feedback as work in progress. I can say, hey, what do you think of my, my work in progress design, what's happening here? And I can send it to InDesign, I can send it to Photoshop, I can send it to Illustrator to continue the work there. So just to show you how that works, I'm going to say send to InDesign, okay, and uh, it'll, it'll send it over, okay, it's been sent, okay, let me move over to InDesign a second, okay, and there it is, all right? with the correct font. Why? Because the correct font was in Typekit. It synced over to my InDesign document. It opened on the desktop. And here's the correct font. Here's the text that I've created. And here's the image. Now, if I go into my, into my libraries here, into my CC libraries, and go into my London Creative Meetup library, I have the images here again. And uh, I'm going to replace it with, uh, with maybe this other image here, the Serpentine River. OK, and place it in here. Ah, let me just place it in in here. Opla. Okay, let's just delete this one and place this other image. You will see that um, very, uh, very <laughs> cunningly, it it uh, it puts a little cloud in here. In here, you see that this image lives in the in the Creative Cloud thanks to Creative Sync. So I can place this image, for example, and make it slightly bigger. Okay, and place it exactly the way I want, and continue the work in InDesign. Now, the really cool thing is that once I go into my CC libraries and I say, this, I want this image, I, I, my, cl my, my client is happy with this image, I want to license that image. So all I need to do is control click on here and say license image. And uh, in this case, I have, a, I have a whole bunch of images that I've, uh, licenses I've already bought. And I say, okay, just take it out of that number. And now the image is syncing. Like I always say, it's syncing very hard. Like this, all right. And as soon, basically what it's doing right now, it's taking this, uh, it's taking the high resolution image of the same image and putting it into my layout. So not only am I, I I've got, I've now I've got the license to use that image, but it also automatically replaces the image inside of my layout uh, so that I can continue uh, working on it. Here we go, okay. So now it's, uh, it's uploading, and here is now the uh, high-resolution, unwatermarked image directly in my layout. How easy is that? Now, the other cool thing, of course, is that if I'm in Photoshop, and uh, let me go into the same library here and uh, take um, this one here, for example. I'm going to say open this, this file, all right? And then I'm going to also say control-click and just place a linked version of that. 
because once I place this, you will see that if I place the linked version, I have my little cloud icon here. And basically this means that this is now a smart object, okay? This is, no, this is, yeah, this is a smart object on which I can, is it a smart object? Let's just transform it into a smart object. If it's not yet, uh, let me just say, it is already. Okay, so now I can ap apply my filters. For example, I can say, let me add some camera raw filter here. And uh, maybe what I want to do, I want to do some, some sort of um, like, like a tiny town. So basically I want to enhance the saturation of the image to make it look a little bit more plasticky maybe, something like that. Say okay, all right. So I've applied that as a smart filter. And then maybe another filter that I may want to add is maybe uh, just a blur gallery like uh, the tilt shift, like this, okay. And now it starts looking exact, oopla, let me just command Z out of that, like this, apply this one, and now I have applied two filters to that image, but I still have the, um, uh, the Adobe stock logo in there. So again, very simply, I can go in here and say, oh, you know what, I want to license that image too. And the beauty of it is that all these th changes that I've made will actually be remembered, all right? How many times has it happened that I downloaded a stock image, I made changes to it, and then I needed to remember exactly what I did to that image to actually re, uh, have the same exact um, uh, effect. And now, thanks to Creative Sync and uh, um, the smart filters here, I can actually get these exact same things on my, um, on my image. Is that cool? Yeah? I think this, is, this really changes everything uh, in the way that we are actually uh, using images and, uh, and also um, um, sharing images because um, Adobe Stock is not a one-way street. It's also an opportunity for anyone to sell their own work. Okay? So with a Photolia contract, you can, you can sell your photography on Photolia, on, on Adobe Stock. As I say Photolia, Adobe Stock, because Photolia still exists and Adobe Stock is our implementation of it inside of the, of the applications. So that's a very interesting, uh, interesting marketplace that's developing here. So let me go into, into this file for a second, because this is, an, oh, you just, you've just seen it. Uh, this is typical of Illustrator, like the file builds up, all right? And this is something that, um, you know, that was always annoying. Like if I zoom into here, for example, oh, the file builds up slowly and, uh, and uh, you know, these artifacts come in, uh, come in um, uh, slowly, and when I when I use my my uh, hand tool, for example, uh, it's it's very choppy and and not easy to navigate because this is a very complex um, illustration. Let me just show you how complex this is. I'll show you the outline, and boom. Okay, so this is how complex this illustration is. All right, and this is not how it should be. Um, actually, what we've done in Illustrator CC 2015, we've made it 10 times faster than it used to be. And I'll show you why, because this, of course, is Illustrator CS6, okay? This is how things were working in CS6. Let me just quit out of this. I'm not gonna save this. And go over here to Illustrator uh, CC 2015. And what, what, what you can see here is this little rocket up here. And basically, that's your shortcut to speed now, because we've leveraged the, the GPU in Illustrator, and you can actually turn on GPU performance for Illustrator uh, in, in, in this new version. And it makes a whole bunch of difference, because when I zoom into that image now, not only can I click and drag to zoom in, okay, but there is no more uh, building of the image. And just so you, everybody is clear that I'm not like selling you something that's not true, <laughs> just showing you that this is actually the same exact complex image, all right? But thanks to, to that GPU acceleration, it got much, much easier to navigate. And another thing that, um, that we've done with this, um, with this GPU acceleration is, um, you remember in Illustrator, basically there was a limit to 6,400% zoom limit, okay? Well, we've changed that to a whopping 64,000%, okay? So now you can zoom into an image 64,000%, like I'm 333,000, uh, let me just zoom in a little bit more, <laughs> and more, and more, and more, and yes, and here's our beautiful UK at 64,000%, okay? Something that I would have never been able to see in a previous version of, uh, of Adobe Illustrator. So that's, um, that's something very, very interesting that, um, that, that they've done in the, on the Illustrator team. Now, we've seen a little bit of the past, a little bit of the present. Um, uh, I want 
just wanted to finish showing you two things that we are working on. I think that we're that you'll find very interesting. Uh, one is a technology preview inside of Illustrator that actually addresses this tool here. Okay, the the tool the um, the, the graph tool. Remember that? Who who uses the graph tool? You do. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. Well, you know, the graph tool hasn't been touched for. Um, uh, over a decade, okay? So this is really something that we needed to, to, uh, to address. So basically, thanks to Creative Sync and thanks to all of these things that we're doing in the cloud, we've, we are working on a new tool called the, the Creative Cloud Charts tool. And basically what this allows me to do is to create charts in Illustrator and then leverage the power of the cloud to actually um, um, uh, work on them. And you see that we're working on a whole bunch of different uh, charts. Now, of course, I'm, I'm showing you the first one, which is uh, um, uh, scaling by value. And if I click on Edit on Creative Cloud, what happens is that um, it first creates an, a library element. As you've understand, uh, understood now, the libraries are the, s the core thing together with Creative Sync. Well, that's how everything is, is synced. And then, we get to this place uh, on Creative Cloud, which actually lets you work on that chart. To um, let me just uh, load that. Okay, here we are. Here are my, my 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 the image that I've created in Illustrator, and we can change that at any time. Again, it's sinking very hard. I mean, every time you see that, you have to think uh, it's sinking hard. That's that's it. Okay, here we go. All right. So basically, what I have here is the possibility to move the chart around, uh, to create other charts, to, to say stretch to fit. Uh, I can even change the data here. And here I can import data as comma separated values, an Excel sheet, for example, uh, or add the data myself. So let's say I want to add one like this and apply that. This, this fourth value it is added into my chart. And so let's save this. So it's syncing the chart to the library collection. Okay, chart has been saved. Okay, to the library Berlin. Okay, fair enough. Um, let me just go back into uh, into Illustrator here. Yes, here is my chart with the fourth person. But the really cool thing is that this all remains live. So basically, if I go here and and maybe select um, a tiki. Um, uh, let me take my little party friend here. I always enjoy him because he's having a fun time. Um, I can now take this uh, this um, um, uh, vector element and say, okay, replace this with these guys. Okay, so basically, this is how how we're reimagining charts and how we're reimagining your workflows for um, uh, for making infographics. So that's is, this is something that you will find here in uh, in Illustrator CC, and it can be it can be um, uh, turned on. If it's not if it's not in the UK version, you can find it in the in the US version for sure because it's a technology preview. Okay, another technology preview that uh, that I want uh, that I really wanted to show you before I finish here is this one. InDesign, of course, is the leading application for creating layouts for print. All right? So we still use InDesign a lot for creating uh, PDFs with our, with our print collateral, you know, even leveraging um, um, uh, standards like PDFX and things like that to stream, stream flow. Uh, uh, stream flow? Does that, that make? No, stream flow, that's a word I just invented. To, uh, um, uh, to streamline our, our, uh, our design processes. Of course, InDesign has become um, increasingly important to create uh, reflowable EPUB, to create fixed layout EPUB. And now another thing that we're uh, working on is the ability to publish your InDesign documents directly uh, online. Okay? And basically what I have here it's, is an InDesign document with a whole bunch of animation in it. And if I go here into my window and I say into interactive and say, um, uh, where is e Okay, here's the preview window for that. Basically, inside of this document, this is what's happening. Okay, I've animated the sky, the number that that uh, that appears, and there's a whole bunch of things happening in sequence, and also uh, elements flying inside of the page, such as this. Okay, so what I wanted to show you is this: this publish online preview. So if I select this. What I can do is give it a name, of course. I can give it a description. I'm going to just export a range of pages. Let me just export the first page of that document. And in advanced, I can choose the compression of the images that I want to put online, the JPEG compression, et cetera, the GIF, the, the, the GIF options, and say OK. And then at that point, InDesign will package everything on that page into, into a file that can be viewed online. 
All right, so it's uploading the document, this first page with all of the animation. The document was successfully uploaded. I can now decide to view the document. I can share the link with my customers or my colleagues or with, uh, with whoever I have to share it with, and I can even share it on social networks if I need to. So let's view the document for a second. My browser will open, and you will see that this exact same page is now available online with the exact same animation, okay? That's something that you would find useful in your workflows? Yeah? I don't hear convinced, con convinced, you're not convinced. <laughs> all right, cool, all right, because this is something that we're working on. This is also something that, uh, that uh, we have in InDesign as a technology preview. So as you can see, um, the 2015 release of Crave Cloud it really is all about uh, you know, the mobile to desktop uh, workflow, mobile to mobile, desktop to mobile, Creative Sync, which ties everything together. All your fonts, all your assets, all your, all your design elements are, uh, are synchronized seamlessly. And then, of course, Adobe Stock, which allowed me to choose images, to use them right away, uh, as watermarked images inside of my uh, inside of my designs, and then uh, and then license them with a simple click from within the applications. So I think I think uh, the 2015 release of uh, of Creative Cloud has is really a big leap forward. There's a ton of other things that, of course, I haven't had time to show you, but there's new features in the, our video workflows, in Premiere, in After Effects, in Photoshop, in Lightroom. There's so much more stuff to discover there, but. I invite you to go to uh, adobe.co.uk or into your Creative Cloud account and actually find out uh, the wealth of uh, new features there is in this release. Thank you for now.